In our last episode, we delivered the vertebrate plans we got from Navarro to the Brotherhood in Chinatown. But they just took a copy, leaving us with the originals. While at Navarro, we learned that the main enclave base is actually out in the Pacific Ocean. And the only way to get there is to board a derelict tanker currently moored in San Francisco. We got a tanker key fob at Navarro, which should grant us access to the tanker. So heading north from Chinatown, we can take the northwestern exit grid to arrive at San Francisco's wharf. Here we see a number of people milling about. Fresh seafood every night. Tasty, even if it has two heads. Oh look, another tourist. I always did like the waves. There are a couple of shacks on this pier. I love living on the beach, they say. Do you like our homes? I bet the kids love it here. We don't find anything in their shacks. Taking a staircase down from the pier, we can explore the beach itself. We find vagrants by a campfire, kids playing by the water. There's a big dead smelly fish on the beach. Where's my mommy? I don't like this place. Well, I guess the parents were wrong. The kids don't like it much here. Heading back to the pier, we can walk past some caravanners and take the first left. We pass by a number of toxic waste barrels sitting here. Sun, fresh air, and seafood. What more could anyone want but a bath? The locals don't have much more to say, so when ready, we can head up a ramp to enter the tanker. Inside, we find the vagrants we've heard so much about. Look at all these new punks. Posers, says one. I'll share my girlfriend if you'll share yours, says the other. Uh, no thanks. There's a room to the right. Looks like a bedroom, but the containers are all empty. Heading north, we see a few people standing outside a door. Talking to the man in the green shirt. Oh my guts. Ow, ow, ow. What's the matter with you, we can ask. What's the matter with me, he says. I'll tell you. It's that I got drunk last week, started gambling with Lo Chow, and lost. I was so blind drunk that I bet my spleen. Now he has it, and I need it back. You sold your spleen? Yeah, I sold it. I was drunk. Plus, I think Lo Chow slipped some jet into my drink. I need my spleen back because I'm getting infections now. Well, we can say hell. I'll take a look for it. I really appreciate this, he says. Go talk to Lo Chow, the merchant, and tell him I need my spleen back. I'll be back, we can say. We'll tackle that in a minute. First, we can open this door to see who's inside. The man belches loudly. <coughs> what do you want, he says. We can belch back. <coughs> but he summons another throaty burp. <coughs> we can belch louder. <coughs> he spits forth a horrific belch that defies the very heavens in its volume and depth. <coughs> and we applaud. Well, that was a nice chat. Talking to him again, he again belches loudly. Who are you, we can ask. And he says, I'm Badger. I used to have a band. Ah, <sighs> called ourselves There We Smolder. Now I'm the resident computer tech in San Fran. Was the band any good, we can ask? And he says, I'll say, we kicked ass. Our singer was, um, a bit of a ponce. And Aaron was always sweating. And everything else was Todd's fault. But we were good. Too bad you're not back together, we can say. I'd like to have heard you. And he says, yeah, you would have. Anyway, I've got to get back to this. If instead we said, I bet your band sucked, he goes, yeah, well, screw you. Hey, we can say, but that just ends the conversation. What sort of computer stuff do you do, we can ask? And he says, well, let's just say I'm an information retrieval specialist. What does that mean, we can ask? And he says, it means that I can find data you need. Well, can you tell me about this tanker, we can ask? And he says, you ought to talk to Mark or the captain about that. Where can I find Mark, we ask? And he says, you can usually find Mark down at the bar. Well, where can I find the captain, we can ask? 
and he says the captain's usually in the bridge. Just go up the stairs in the bar. We see a terminal here, but we can't access it. Walking around, we see a lot of generators or pumps or something. And in the middle of his little shop here, we find a ladder going below. At the bottom, ah, it's a bunch of monsters. Oh, going back up, going back up. Okay, well, we'll, uh, we'll worry about that later. First to explore this deck of the ship, heading west, we find a general goods store. Hi, I'm Jenna. May I help you, she says. I want some information, we can say. And she says, I've learned that the less you know, the longer you live. I have no other information for you. So, would you like to see my goods? Well, yes, we can say. She sells Jimmy hats, tool kits, rope, a couple of books, and an assortment of odds and ends. The other table in her shop has foodstuffs, a couple of first aid kits, and quite a large stack of stim packs. Heading out of the market, we see that this portion of the deck is huge. It's just sprawling. Lots of people walking around. Next time, I want to find a tribe of goths. Sure are a lot of strong women around here, huh? So wait, are these vagrants, um, 90s era punk goths? Okay, well, good luck to them. On the western end, we find a northern room. Inside, we see a man. AHS-9 cheated us, and he'll cheat you too if you let him. I think he's talking about the humbologists there. Well, we'll be careful. There are boxes in the back room, but nothing else of interest. Moving out and heading northeast, we find another room with a bunch of containers that are empty. We hear computer machinery buzzing and whirring in the adjacent room, but we can't find a way into that room just yet. So, heading back out, we can explore the next merchant, right next to the general goods merchant, the gun store. Good day to you. May I help you, says the merchant. I want some information, we can say. But he says, I have no information to sell. I deal only in weapons. You want to see my wares? Yes, we can say. Despite being a guns merchant, his inventory is mostly aid. Foodstuffs, chems, a few tools. The only weapon he had when I arrived was a mega power fist. With the middle and western side of the ship explored, we can move to the eastern side. Here we find the ship's lounge. A couple of empty tables and empty boxes. Moving north, we find a stage. Maybe it's a theater for amateur dramatics. In the back room, we find a couple of containers, but again, these are all empty. Moving east, we find a hallway lined with rooms. On the northeastern side of the hallway is a bathroom, and to the west, we find a number of doors. These lead us to mostly empty rooms until at the very end, we find a staircase going down. We arrive again at the bottom of the ship, but there appear to be fewer monsters down here. We'll have to bear that in mind for later. Retracing our steps, we can open the door to the bar. We find Mark, the guy Badger told us about, standing by the bar. What can I do for you, Mama Jama? Who are you, we can ask. I'm Mark. I'm the resident smartass and know-it-all. And he smiles. Well, what is this place? This is the Poseidon Marine Vessel Valdez, also called the PMV Valdez. If you want more information about the Valdez, the best person to ask is the captain. The name of this ship is a reference to the real-world tanker, the Exxon Valdez. The collision of the Valdez and the oil it leaked into the ocean happened in 1989, nearly 10 years before this game was made, and was the largest oil spill in American history until 2010, when the Deepwater Horizon spill sadly superseded it. The PMV Valdez is very interesting in terms of the Fallout Divergence. The divergence between our world and the Fallout universe happened somewhere in the 50s. However, in our world, the Exxon Valdez wasn't made until 1986. The Valdez was named after the Alaskan town of Valdez, and that's because there's an Alaskan pipeline terminal in Valdez, where tankers would go to fill up with oil. We already know from Fallout lore that fossil fuels around the globe had already been exhausted, save for one cache, which America obtained. To find a tanker in this universe named the Valdez leads us to believe that oil at one time flowed through an Alaskan pipeline, necessitating a tanker named after a town wherein lies an Alaskan pipeline terminal to ship oil from Alaska to the lower 48. So it looks like Poseidon Energy is the Fallout universe's 
Exxon, or Exxon Mobil, as it's called now. The question now is, what is the Valdez doing in San Francisco? After all, by the time the bombs dropped, the Alaskan pipeline had all dried up. Perhaps we'll find out in a bit. You mentioned the captain, we can say. Who's that? And he says the captain is a tough-ass old military guy. He sits upstairs there and checks the place out. He's got some thorough knowledge about this ship. So who's in charge, we can ask? And Mark says, in charge? No one's in charge of us. Well, where do y'all come from, we can ask? Oh, all over the wasteland, he says. We'd heard things about San Francisco passed down from our elders. Some of us have ancestors who used to live here before the Great War. You want to hear more? Uh, yeah, we can say. We are a band of musicians, tech heads, geeks, and artists. We thought we'd come back to someplace famous for artistic and personal freedoms. I came here to spawn. He came here to spawn? Ugh, gross. Looks like somebody's been listening to too much Scott McKenzie. Want to hear more still? Yes, we can say. Well, when we got here, we figured we'd camp out here until we either figured out how to get this tanker moving again, or until we thought of something else. Have you figured out how to move the tanker, we can ask? And he says, I think the captain figured out how to do it, but we need several elements first. We've basically given up on taking it for ourselves, to tell the truth. We've got other plans now. What are they, we can ask? You want to know what our plans are, he says? We're going to keep moving around until we can find a place that hasn't been screwed over by human greed, and then we're going to try to set up a better society. Do you know how you're going to do that, we can ask? And he says, well, we're hoping we can avoid making society's mistakes. Hell, things can't get much worse. Tell me about the Habologists, we can ask. And he says, they're crazy. Don't trust them, unless you're mentally feeble or like being screwed over. They're interested only in your money and your soul, and there's a good chance they'll destroy the one to get at the other. I've seen it happen too many times. Well, we can say, tell me about the she. They're a good sort, he says, as far as they go. They're a little untrusting of outsiders, but then that's not always such a bad attitude to take in these times. They've got some weird customs and they talk funny, but they're all right. That's it, Mark. Goodbye, we can say. We can try to talk to the bartender, but he says, I'm closed. Go away. No matter what time of day I came to talk to this guy, he was always closed. This is due to a scripting error. The condition for the bar to be closed is mistakenly always set to true. Moving to the southeastern end of the bar, we find a staircase leading upstairs. Here, we find the bridge, and standing next to a computer is presumably the captain. But when we talk to him, he says, What the hell do you want? I don't speak to anyone unless they're friends or good people. Do something for one of my buddies and then come talk to me. Oh, so we gotta help out one of his friends before we can talk to the captain. However, we can access the computer terminal right next to him. Welcome to PoseidonNet. This terminal is limited to transmission between one tanker, PMV Valdez, and the docking rig. Command? We can check status. Fuel tanks empty, cargo hold empty, navigation computer non-functional, mooring lines attached. Because of this, if we go back and try to go, error, fuel tanks empty. Oh, so we got quite a list of things to do before we can get this sucker running. The captain's bedroom is empty, so now looks like we need to go downstairs and help out one of the captain's friends. We'll start by helping out poor Chip here, who lost his spleen. He asked us to go speak with Lo Chow at the Flying Dragon 8. Heading out of the ship, we can explore the eastern side of the pier, but despite there being a number of houses here and a bunch of empty containers, we don't find anything of interest or of use. In one of the buildings, we find a terminal that we can't access and a retinal scanning machine, but again, we can't access it. We find another staircase down to the beach with more vagrants and more tents. With the wharf explored, we can head south back to Chinatown. Heading south, we can enter the Flying Dragon 8, the last time we were here, Lo Chow told us that he was the guy to go to if we needed information. Now we know that in order to move, the Valdez needs fuel. Fuel that we don't have. So we can ask Lo Chow if he knows where we can get fuel for the Valdez. And he says, you might try some of the Xi scientists in the Steel Palace. 
Perhaps they can help you with your fuel needs. Then we can say, I'm looking for a spleen. A spleen, he says? Ha <laughs> ha! Yes, Chip from the Valdez lost his spleen in a card game the other day. I sold it to Dr. Wong. He was fascinated by it. How do you lose a spleen, we can ask? And he says, well, he was drunk. Very, very drunk. He was obsessed with his spleen all night long, and then he bet it. So you took his spleen, we can say? Yes, it was a debt. He is an honorable man, says Lo Chow. You're a sick, rude bastard, aren't you, we can say. And he says, you are a dishonorable person. I will not have you in my shop. Come back some other time. So Lo Chow sold the spleen to Dr. Wong. To get it back, we're going to have to go inside the Steel Palace. This is the headquarters of the Shi, and we find it by going through the exit grid to the east. Now, we'll fully explore the Steel Palace in a dedicated video, but thankfully we find Dr. Wong so we can complete this quest right inside the entrance. Heading inside, we find a door to the left, but this room is empty. So going through the barrier, which is deactivated, we can immediately turn left and open a door. We find some computers and a number of scientists talking to the one to the south. May I assist you with something, he says. Who are you, we can ask. And he says, I am Dr. Wong. I am the head scientist of this installation. Now, he has a number of dialogue options, which we'll get to in a later episode. But for now, we'll simply say, hey... I hear you have somebody else's spleen. And he says, ah, yes, indeed. I will prepare it with fava beans and a nice Chianti. This is a reference to Hannibal Lecter in Silence of the Lambs. A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. We can say, you've still got it? Good. Chip needs it back. Who is this Chip, says Dr. Wong. It's my spleen now, and I'm having it for dinner. And we can say Chip's the original owner of the spleen. He was drunk and sold it to Lu Chow. Dr. Wong says a deal's a deal. He can't have it. Sorry, but we made a bargain. And just because Chip regrets it now, doesn't mean he can go back on his deal. If we choose that option, we fail. We can't convince him to give it back. So alternatively, we can say, he needs it to survive, you know. It came from inside his body. And Dr. Wong says, it's a human spleen? Lo Chow didn't tell me that. Tell your friend to come by for it within the next day, and I'll gladly return it to him. I just hope you can find a way to replace it in his body in time. Or if we choose the dialogue option to say, you do know that you're supposed to serve liver with that wine instead of a spleen, right? He says, ha ha, yes, I too saw that old movie. Wait, what are you saying? Are you saying that? Yes, we can say. It's a human spleen. And again, he freaks out and says that Chip can come and get it. This is another interesting tidbit concerning the divergence. It means that the movie Silence of the Lambs, made in 1991, was also made in the Fallout universe. Heading out of the Steel Palace, we can go through Chinatown and back towards the wharf. Then, entering the Valdez, we can tell Chip the good news. Have you found my spleen yet, he says? Yes, we can say. Dr. Wang Yitze has it, and he'll give it back to you. Go talk to him about it. All right, and he pants. Before I do, maybe we ought to set up a way to get it back in me. Talk to Dr. Fung about that, right? Thanks. All right, we can say. I really appreciate what you're doing for me, says Chip. I won't forget it. No prob, we can say. We remember Dr. Fung. We met him in Chinatown. Heading out of the Valdez and back to the wharf, we can follow it south towards Chinatown. Then, passing the martial arts ring, we can enter Dr. Fung's lab. Now here I have to note that if we're working with the Habologists, then Dr. Fung here won't work with us. Honored sir, he says, I recommend you seek out your cults, doctors. We can't complete this quest unless we kill all of the Humbologists. And he's the only doctor that can perform this operation. So this is a good one to do before talking with them or after deciding to kill them all. If, however, we are not working with the Humbologists, when we talk with him, we find a dialogue option to say, I have a friend who's missing a spleen. Can you help him? 
And he says, of course I can. And since you're aware of Doc Holliday, I'll do it for no more than the sake of friendship. Tell your spleenless friend to come here and I will replace it for him. We got this option because we talked with Doc Holliday at Broken Hills. Doc Holliday, who was a student of Dr. Fung here. Had we not formed this friendship, it would have cost us a thousand bucks to convince Fung here to replace the spleen. Either way, we can head back through the wharf and into the Valdez to tell Chip the good news. Did you talk to Fung, he says? Yeah, we can say, and he says he'll stick it in you for free. A dialogue response which, out of context, would be disturbing. Wow, he says, you have some serious connections. Come back in a day and I'll see what help I can give you. You got it, we can say. And with that, Chip walks off to go get his spleen replaced. If we wait one day, after a while, Chip comes back. Good as new. I can't tell you how much better I feel, he says. Now, what was it you wanted from me? Now that Chip is healed, we can ask him some questions. How do I run this boat, we can ask. But he just says, check with the captain. He lives in the captain's office upstairs. Well, where are my people? Do you know, we can ask. And he says, word has it, they got taken west across the water. Your best bet in getting there is getting this tub working. So somehow Chip knows that the Enclave kidnapped our tribe's people. Hey, I need some computer work done, we can say. Computer work? If you can't get it from the she or the homologists, you'll want to talk to Badger. He's a whiz. And that's all Chip can talk with us about. Now that we've helped Chip, the captain will talk with us. But there is another way to get the captain to talk with us. And that is to help Badger. Heading back into Badger's room, after learning that we need to get fuel for this tanker, we find a new option to say, I'm looking for some fuel. And Badger says the she have all the fuel around here. I could take a gander at their mainframe for you. Can you, we can ask? And he says, yeah, but it'll cost you. What's your price, we can say? You gotta do me a favor first, says Badger. My girlfriend got herself lost in the tanker. Find her for me and I'll do it. You got it, we can say. See ya. Now we explored all over this tanker and we didn't find a missing girlfriend. But then again, we didn't explore the bottom level. Heading to that back staircase we found, we can take it downstairs. But instead of finding it empty, we immediately get attacked by aliens. What are aliens doing in the bowels of a tanker? At this level, they're not too difficult, but the sounds of our battle attract a bunch of centaurs and floaters. We have to dispatch them as well. After this wave is dead, we see a vault door in the middle of this floor. Well, it's not really a vault door, but it's the door mechanism. This must have been destined for the vault under construction that we found only if we bought the location from Merck at NCR. This must have been en route to Vault Tech when the bombs dropped. So does that mean the Valdez and oil tanker had been converted into a cargo ship? but it's then we get attacked by another wave of enemies. And they just kept coming. We'll have to clear this entire bottom level. With the enemies dead, we can head back to the vault door as a point of reference and then start exploring. In the northwestern corner, we find a bunch of boxes, but we can't peer inside any of them. Moving south, we find a skeleton on the ground and it's wearing a yellow and blue jumpsuit. Could that be a dead vault dweller? If so, how did he get here? There are some bunk beds to the south, a vagrant's camp to the west, and in the middle of this floor, we find a locked door. Just outside of it, we find a switch. We see a keyless entry system. A sign reads, Use Tanker Fob Here. Oh, so this is how we activate the ship. Thankfully, we have one already. Using the tanker fob that we found at Navarro, we can activate the switch and open the door. Inside, we find a ladder leading upstairs. We arrive back on the main level in a small square room, but here we find a narrow hallway that leads us to a computer room. This is the room we heard while we were exploring earlier. Accessing the terminal, 
Beep. Terminal malfunctioning. Require nav comp installation. Beep. Well, it just so happens we have the nav comp chip. Remember, we found the nav comp chip while exploring Vault 13. It was inside a locked locker on the third level, the same locker room where we found the GEC. After using it on the terminal, we can access it again, navigational computer online. So, two down, one to go. All we need now to get this bucket of bolts moving is some tanker fuel. By the way, I have to mention here that since this hallway is single file, it's really annoying coming in here with companions. Probably best to make them wait outside. Otherwise, we have to push them back hex by hex. Super annoying. But we still have to find Badger's girlfriend. So heading back downstairs, we can explore the western part of this lower floor. We see barrels and mattresses, some terminals we can't interact with, and a bunch of pipes, nothing else. So moving east, we find a bunch of blue boxes in the middle of this floor that we can't open up, and next to them, a ladder. This leads up to Badger's room. It's the ladder we came down at the beginning of the episode. Heading back downstairs and moving east, we find the wall, completely barren, nothing on this side, until we move north. And here, amongst some boxes, barrels, and bones, we find a woman. Aye! Help me, she says. Please, they're gonna kill me. Stop them. Aye! We can't have a conversation with her, but simply by standing next to her, she joins our party as a temporary companion. Now all we gotta do is head back to Badger. There are a couple of computers and generators in a room next to the staircase, but we can't access them or activate them. So the fastest way back to Badger is to take that ladder in the middle of the ship. This puts us right into his room. Once inside, we can talk with him. Thank you, thank you, thank you, he says. I can't thank you enough for saving her. So now what do you want? Now when we ask him if he can get the tanker fuel from the she, he says, I think I like you enough that I can do it for you now. Who do you want me to visit? Now, we've already learned that the she have the fuel. So if we choose the herbologists here, he says, Like stealing candy from a baby. They'll never find me. What do you want from them? Our only option is to say never mind because they don't have fuel at this moment. Now, we will have the opportunity to make decisions later that gives them the fuel, in which case working with Badger here is one of the only ways to get it back. So instead, we'll ask him to get the fuel from the she. I can get them, he says. They're pretty protective of their info, and they've got some serious ice protecting their machines. Are you sure you want me to go after them? We have an opportunity to back out now, or we can say, yes, I need what they have. All right, he says, but crap might hit the fan. This is our last opportunity to back out, but if we really want him to steal the fuel from the she, we can say, can you transfer the fuel from their reserves to the tanker? And he says, all right, check back with me in a day or so, and I'll let you know. Thanks, we can say, and coming by a day later, he says, okay, I got into the she computers. I don't know if I made it out undetected. I guess now the best thing to do is hide. You want anything else? Did you get what I needed, we can ask? And he says, yeah, I got the fuel. Thanks a lot, we can say, see ya. Now we have everything we need to head to the Enclave base. But if we choose this option, many days later, the she arrive inside the tanker looking for Badger. What the hell do you want, says Badger. Badger of the punks, I presume, says one she. You have disgraced our emperor for the last time, says the other. Dude, says Badger, lighten up. I just wanted some candy. <laughs> the she assassinate Badger. Now I'll never hear his band play, say the vagrants. <laughs> I am so full of hate right now. Who would have killed him? Who'd want to kill Badger? They're so upset that now they'll never hear, there we smolder. So if we choose this method, Badger dies. Now perhaps that's an acceptable sacrifice. After all, we're trying to save an entire tribe, but there are ways to do this without Badger dying. So reloading a save, Instead of asking Badger to steal the fuel, we're going to find another way. Talking with Badger's girlfriend, we can try to find out how exactly she got lost. You saved my life, she says. I'll answer any questions you have. What were you doing down there, we can ask? And she says, it's kind of stupid, really. 
I was just exploring because Badger was on the computer, and I went downstairs and got lost, and the next thing you know, I'm surrounded by monsters. Good thing you came along. Yes, it is, we can say. Did you find anything interesting? And she says, I found the room I was in. I also found a room that looked like a fueling area. I didn't get much farther because of the monsters. Where are you from, we can ask. And she says, I'm from a place south of the Boneyard and south of the Glow. We are not too far from the sea. I used to be a nanny, but then the kids mutated into monsters. Okay, how'd you meet Badger, we can ask. He came down south and went to a club I used to go to, she says. So when things fell apart for me, I thought this would be the best place to go. And that's all she has to say on the matter. Well, now that we've helped both Chip and Badger, the captain will talk to us. So heading back upstairs, we can finally talk with him. I heard what you did for my men, he says. Thanks. What can I help you with? Why do they call you the captain? And he says, I used to serve with the Enclave. Then I realized it wasn't the USA I was fighting for. It was for the rich old bastards who didn't want to give up their power. I deserted, and now I live here with more honest people. Honest people, we can say, these guys? Yes, he says. With these people, you know exactly where you stand. They don't play games. The Enclave was like a pack of hyenas. They'd turn on you in a second. How did you hook up with them, we can ask? Easily enough, he says. I just left the Navarro base one day and headed down here. I figured it was the last place anyone would look. Besides, I'm not important enough for the Enclave to look for me. I'm just a loose end. What exactly is the Enclave, we can ask? And he says, the Enclave is the remnants of old times. If you take this thing across the water to the rig, you'll find out for yourself. What rig, we can say? And he says, there's a big Poseidon oil rig left out on the water. That's the final base of the Enclave. And unless I miss my bet, that's where your friends are too. So the Enclave are on an oil rig. That's what's out in the middle of the Pacific, not a ship. This oil rig must be right above the last pocket of fossil fuels on Earth. The one pre-war America secured before the Chinese could. And this explains why the PMV Valdez is in San Francisco. San Francisco was the closest port of call to the last remaining source of fossil fuel on Earth. But why then would the Valdez be carrying a vault door control mechanism? Is there some sort of connection between vault and the pre-war American government? What else is going on out there on the rig, we can ask? Beats me, he says. I was a Navarro tech, not a rig operator. We talked to them over the con lines, and that was about the extent of it. Well, I hear you're the one who knows all about this ship, we can say. And he says, this ship's a Poseidon tanker. It's equipped with tech that's lasted through the war. It's got a fob that allows access to the navigation computer room, and it's got an IFF transponder that protects it from Poseidon guns. What's an IFF transponder, we can ask? And he says, IFF, identity friend or foe. It means that this ship is identified as a friend. So other Poseidon things, like, say, an oil rig, won't fire at you when you come into range. Oh, and a fob is some sort of enclave technology that lets you enter a door electronically. You'd probably find one of them at one of their bases or some such place. How do you get this thing to go, we can ask. How do you pilot this rig, he says? Fill her up with some gas. Try the hubologists or the she after you've taken care of everything else. And then press the button. The computer will take care of the rest. If it's still working, it'll sail right out to the oil rig, and they won't fire at you because you've got the IFF transponder. Just make sure you've got what you need to access everything. Fob, working computer, and fuel. Easy enough, huh? Yeah, we can say. Bye. Oh yeah, he says. You gotta get the navigation computer working as well. I bet you'll find parts for it in one of those old vaults. Thanks, we can say. Goodbye. Well, we've already installed the navcom chip. And we've got the fob. Now we just need to get fuel. And it looks like we need to get it from the she. Or maybe from the hubologists. In order to get this fuel while sparing poor Badger's life, we'll explore one of those two options in my next episode. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week on my channel. 
So if you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you feel like you're still missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop, Enclave. Declare your undying support for the remnants of America's government with this brand new shirt. This design comes on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes and in a wide array of colors. You can find it on other products as well, like smartphone cases, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.